Some people ask and wonder what is a good idea to get a master's degree in ID, in UX, and maybe even bootcamp, three year, two year, one year, or maybe not at all because they're too expensive. What is on earth in a master's degree? And that is what this video is about. I'm about to go through my master's degree in media design at Art Center. Let's roll the intro. Boom, here it is, my diploma. Yay, I did it again. I also have my transcript, so we can go class by class and see what went down or up from there. Let's dive right in. So our center, official transcript. And I started on September 2017. So the timeline is Georgia Tech, Zynga internship, Google internship, and then our center. And apparently, if you look at the grades, my grades slipped. What mainly because I don't care about grades anymore. At this moment, for the grad program, all the classes are planned. I have no room for taking more. But later I found out I could, which I'll get to that later. So first class, Lab Core A, Structures. So this class was taught by three different professors. So basically, we sp you split the semester into three parts. So the first one was about learning how to use Unity 3D uh, in my format project was to use Unity 3D to create air pollution. More like about learning tools and exploring some concepts in this structured way, whatever that means. The second project was more of a grocery shopping AR that you use hand gesture to do your filtering and it would guide you to where you want to go to pick up your products in the supermarket. I remember going to Seattle just for fun, for make a quick weekend trip and I was working on some of the AR hand gesture interaction prototype. The project didn't end up doing too well, but I still like my prototyping interaction aspect of that. The third one was about architecture and AR. Again, AR, so you can see the theme here, AR, Unity 3D, those are the big elements that are uh, in this program. I ended up doing an AR project on the top of a wishing well. That's a new way of making a wish or pray in whatever future, that's how you would do it. Uh, it ended up being a good installation piece and uh, in the end of the year show. Lab Core B, Interactions. Uh, so this one is learning more about sensors and learning those tools to prototype, to make projects, which I know most of those. So this class is it's not too new for me. The new part comes into the projects. So for example, one of the projects was about, this is not a knob. So you need to use a knob as part of the electronic sensor and then have whatever camouflage design form on the, to put on the top to cover it up. So when you interact with the final product, it doesn't feel like a knob, but the actual mechanism behind it is not. Lab Core C is called Intervention. It's a short project. So the intention was to intervene the community to make the invisible visible. So it's like revealing something in a community that you don't normally see with human eyes. I end up doing an LED strip that respond to human skate. I wouldn't say that's my best project. I think the project brief itself is cool. Making the invisible visible. But I feel like if you don't really grab the essence of this, it could go wrong really quickly, just like my project. Next is lab project one. <laughs> Colloquium, which is a ECA lecture. Just sit there, guest speakers come in and give a talk and you just, mm, okay, good. Mm, mm, take notes. Mm. Basically a class to show up. Next, critical frameworks sounds very Intense is basically a writing class. Uh, teaches you how to write better, frame your argument, like an English class, but more towards writing for design. I'm not going too detailed into it, but the, my takeaway was this class got me thinking about things or concepts that I typically don't think about. And then next, spring 2018, lab project two, more focused on Unity 3D, because we get to use HTC Vive, VR, moving in the room with the headset from the outside. We look like an idiot. We did some interesting work. The professor was really good. One of my favorite projects came from there, which we did a VR project or more of an XR project, extended reality project driven by motion. So if I'm doing this and you're also doing this, you can join what I see in the VR world, which I still think is an interesting concept. 
there are a lot more can ex can be extended from this concept. And then we also did some project on artificial intelligence. The one I did was uh, a gesture AI. So if you have a watch, then it can use AI to detect your gesture or learn about your gesture, your movement, and how it can be used in reality, but in a useless way. Interesting concept, right? Very interesting experiment. So we also did a project on, on AI. The problem itself, it kind of limits your design into a more speculative design. It's not nothing practical or product driven. That's what I don't like about it. But I guess that's the nature of this program. So we end up doing a project on AI that's hosted locally, but it's like an AI for this community, an AI for this neighborhood. So each AI knows about different things. They are like, ex these AIs are experts about these communities. So when you step into this community, you're able to harness the power of this AI to learn about what's around them. The next is Colloquium. Again, a class to just show up, you get credit. Critical Frameworks 2, again, a writing class, uh, prepping you to write your thesis, I would say. There's another two week project right before we depart for the summer, there's something called the Thesis Gateway. It's a two week sprint that you come with a concept and you make a quick prototype to demonstrate your area of interest for your thesis. I passed, but I later found out I actually barely passed. So I had to redo my thesis gateway over the summer when I was interning. And speaking of internship, in summer 2018, I got to intern at Waymo, which was the Google self-driving car project. If you want to learn more about that internship, link up here. After the summer, go back to our center to finish my last year of my master's degree for 2018. Colloquium, right? class to show up. Critical practices one. So this is half thesis writing and half other random things about like how to apply for grants, fellowship, scholarships, competitions, award, and things like that. Lab thesis, you know, lab thesis, a long studio class for you to work on your thesis, talk to your advisors, see what progress you made in the past week, and you have midterm review and final review at the end of the semester. Next is spring 2019. You're supposed to have a great progress on your thesis. And of course, somehow I did not. I had to work on my thesis in the winter break. Just like the thesis gateway, I barely passed. And then in spring 2019, I had to check in with another advisor every week or every two days to make sure I'm on track. Especially because we did not have much time to finish up our thesis in the spring semester because at the end of the spring semester, our center always have a end of the year show, which is a school-wide show. We all have our projects presented, installed, displayed in a convention center. It's like a trade show. Really cool. If you're around, have to check it out. So we only have one and a half months to finish up our thesis. And then we have to design and make our installation for the exhibition, for the end of the year exhibition. It was intense for me because I was playing a lot of catch up in that case. Colloquium, class you just have to show up. Critical practice two, finishing up your thesis paper. Motion design two, okay, we look back to this. This is a time in my last semester, I found out I can take classes outside of my master's program. What? So I took motion design two and intro to post-production. Very motion, filmmaking, video editing driven, right? And I ending up, <laughs> withdrawing the two because it was so intense for my thesis work, also interviewing with some internships and full-time jobs uh, during that time. But I have to say, the Motion Design 2, it was a great class. I only sat in for two weeks. I have learned so much, so much more than I self-taught in my past three years combined. And Intro to Post-Production, I just dropped it because it was so basic and you were not allowed to use iMovie or Final Cut Pro, which is what I used to. And for a lot of the simple concepts in editing, I knew a lot about it. Actually, almost all about it, just because I am making YouTube videos. And rather I drop this intro to post-production class, I understand why it was so basic. Because it was intro to post-production, it was meant for freshmen, students in the film major, that they knew nothing about film, this is where they learn about how to edit. But for me, I have done animations, video editing, YouTube in my undergrad. So easy peasy. And then if I keep scrolling, Masters of Fine Arts, dates of conferred. Yep, I did it again. Yay. Some thoughts and takeaway after I finish this program. One, if you were to go in for a program, let's say master's program, make sure, make sure, make sure you know what you're looking for. My media design program was 
really experimental, speculative design driven. I decided to do this program partially because I knew it was a speculative, experimental design. I want to look into this new area because in my whole undergrad, I was doing something so practical. I haven't tried this part of the design yet, so let me just give it a shot. But at the same time, when I'm in the program, I learned that, mm, okay, the nature of me, my personality is really anchored on practical design, shipping products. So this is not very useful for me. So it's end up not really productive for me because I could have done a lot of other things. I have to say, I get a little bit frustrated at the end and also maybe a sense or a feel of wasting time. The bright side is, I knew I wanted to learn more about AI, AR, Unity 3D, a little bit more practice on Cinema 4D, which I got those in this program. So that's good. So if you were eyeing on the master's program or bootcamp, make sure you have a concrete specific list of what you're looking for. Make sure the program is offering you those. Number two, who that program will fit the best. So for example, I understand what the program is offering. They're offering a platform, a community for designers to come in with really ambitious, futuristic, groundbreaking, revolutionary ideas. So this media design program can help you build on the top of that. So if you have those ideas in mind, this might be a good program for you. But sometimes I feel like they're so ambitious, they're so future forward looking, like 10, 20 years ahead. That ends up being a little bit too impractical for me. And maybe it was too ambitious that I failed. I'm not ambitious enough. Hey, I think I'm ambitious. So will I do it again? Probably not. But I have to say, our center is a really good school, especially the undergrad department. So if I were to do it again, I might do something different at our center. So if you are eyeing on a program, make sure you do a few things. One, talk to existing students so you know the current status of the program. What are they teaching? Who are teaching? What tool are they using? The topic, subjects, things like that. And then talk to past students. The best would be the, the year who just graduated. So you can get more relevant information. If they graduated 10 years ago, that's probably not relevant anymore. Ask them about why they joined the program. After they graduated, did they get a full-time job? Where did they get a full-time job? What industry, what area, geographic-wise? In the LA, or in the Bay Area, or Seattle, or New York? What type of work do they do? And also, did they get what they expected to get before they joined the program? And then also, of course, you look into the curriculum, look at their past projects. They might have a course website. You can look at those to see what project they did. Do you like those projects? Would you like to do some of those projects? And then if you've done all three, then it might give you a better sense of whether this program is for you or not. Everybody's journey is different. Hope this video helps shine some light on your future thinking or planning or just have fun watching. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Tschüss.